Tonight, empty shelves and aisles across the country have parents scrambling, desperate for any solution to the baby formula shortage. As parents search for answers, many are wondering, how did we get here? Some experts say the baby formula shortage started as early as two years ago when the pandemic did. COVID-19 led to disruptions in labor, transportation, and raw materials. This combined with parents stockpiling formula led to shortages in some states. Jump to February of this year, U.S. health officials warned parents across the country to stop buying powdered formula made by Abbott. It came after several babies got sick after ingesting it and two died. February 17th, the FDA pulled it off store shelves, leading to even more shortages. By April, 31% of stores reported they were completely out of baby formula. That number jumped to 40. Now even 50% report being out in some states, including Tennessee. Major retailers like Target and CVS are even limiting how much formula parents can purchase in one trip. Looking forward, Abbott says their Michigan plant could reopen in two weeks pending FDA approval. It will take at least eight weeks to see the product back on shelves. The FDA says it will allow Abbott Nutrition to release some of the potentially contaminated formula the agency says it's making the decision out of an urgent need for certain specialty and metabolic formulas. Amid that shortage, mothers are seeking new ways to feed their babies. The shortage has prompted a major surge in interest in donor breast milk. That's according to the Human Milk Bank Association of North America. Reporter Mary Klingler explains what you need to know when purchasing breast milk from other mothers. Rolls on top of rolls. So we got to put it to some good use and help some other little babies. Victoria Wells says she produces so much milk, her three-month-old baby Kane can't drink it all. He has always ate a little more than most babies his age per his rolls. But he eats about four and a half ounces every three hours, and I pump anywhere from eight to 12 every three hours. That's two to three times the amount baby Kane can eat. Pretty soon, she accumulated two freezers full of breast milk. So far, we've saved about 2,200 ounces. So it started off just as a little stash. Our freezer is full. And I was like, I have 50 more bags in my freezer. Like, what am I going to do with all of this? She works at a daycare, hearing daily the need other moms have for a way to feed their babies. So she took to Facebook to offer it to her friends. The lady who came and got the 300 ounces, she drove two and a half hours. She was cleared by her doctor to donate her breast milk but the milk bank she wanted to donate to waitlisted her. And now it's reached all the way to like Indiana and Texas and Kentucky. Dr. Cliff James is a pediatrician in Oak Ridge. He says breast milk is the healthiest for a baby. We know that there's nothing better for your baby than your breast milk. It has all kinds of benefits. But if you're planning to get your breast milk from another mother, he says you need to do your homework. That none of this is FDA regulated. We don't know the safety of this. Make sure you know where the milk is coming from and how it's being handled and how it's being stored. We are very grateful to be able to help other people. On each wrist. Well, says she had posted about her breast milk back before the formula shortage began, but a recent post really took off. It got more than 1,500 shares from lots of moms in need from Tennessee even other states.